So a canvas that became cash. Many an artist would love to pull off that trick. But is it possible to be commercially successful and critically acclaimed? Artist Terry Bradley has pretty strong views on the matter. His work hangs in the homes of the rich and famous Madonna included. And he pulls no punches when it comes to the critics. Ignorance is bliss. I, I have no idea of what, how you're meant to be as an artist or how, how you're meant to do things. I just did what felt right. It took me about three years to say I was an artist because I just didn't feel comfortable with that because, you know, I didn't go to any art school. I had no qualifications, so I just thought I paint a bit. And I used to say I paint a bit, and people kept saying, you know, do you do bungalows and stuff? And I said, no, no, I paint pictures and stuff, you know? It's funny when I came in contact with more of the arts of the world, there's supposedly ways you're meant to do things, but I just did what felt right for me. I sort of looked towards the art establishment at the start thinking, I should be more involved. I did feel uncomfortable in myself because I have no history in art and I, I felt I don't know the answer to all these questions about when Van Gogh had a sore throat. So I just thought, do you know something? I'll just stick myself to myself. If you're going to be a graphic artist or an illustrator or teach art or be a lecturer, you follow that route, you get your qualifications, that's fine. But there's raw talent there that we must be losing somewhere. You know, there's, there's real talent that just goes and gets put through a system and loses interest and just says, you know, to hell this. I've gone my own way and I had to be tough, smart, think sideways, do lots of stuff to survive because there was no help there. And there's closed doors with buzzers on them. In the early days, galleys didn't really want to know. But the same galleys would be on the phone now trying to get a painting. And that's secretly, that's nice for me, but I don't need them anymore. One of the Dublin shows, I was asked, what critics do you want to invite to your show? And I just said, well, why should I invite someone I don't know to tell me where I'm going wrong? What are they going to say to me? I'm painting from the heart and things that I want to create myself and, you know, and see on my wall. What are they going to say that's going to help that? What qualifications do they have? But the turning point for me personally would be starting to paint the guys, the tough guys. Growing up in North Belfast, surrounded by the awful tattoos, the troubles, all that stuff. And I guess for me, I wanted to paint something powerful and how I see you know, a Belfast guy. You know, no religion, a Belfast guy, hardworking, you know, he's damaged, but he's still there. I call that character Frank, because it's the essence of my dad. He was an honorable man, he was a hardworking man. We've sold some of these guys here to Pittsburgh in America, and like to Poland and to Australia. And people saying that that's their grandfather, that's how they remember their dad. It's a nice representation of what they imagine their grandfather to be. The reason why especially Frank is so close to me is that I do suffer from depression myself and I feel a bit like Frank myself sometimes. I feel like I've gone through an awful lot to get to this place, an awful lot of emotional stuff, especially when the, the art started getting really, really successful and I was getting invited to all these different functions and do's and things. But I was getting more and more anxious and getting more and more short of breath and feeling very, very insecure about everything and with success, it just it pushed everything into a corner. And I, I think when you add anxiety to depression, it's not a good mix. But it's, you know, something, it's just an illness. And I take ownership of it. I talk about it, which, is, which is diffuses lots of it. And that's how it goes. I'm so close to what I do. There's things that people will see on the outside that I don't see because it's so close to me. But I'd say definitely a lot of who, who I am is on the canvas. You know, good, bad or indifferent. People will say to me, you know, it's okay if you, your, your work sells or you paint what people want. I don't know what people want. I paint what I like. I'm not painting for that person's wall. I'm painting for my wall. You know, the Batman painting I've just done, there's a list as long as your arm from America and Australia trying to buy that painting. I absolutely adore it. It's, for me, it's powerful. It's my Batman and it's, I've tried new things in there. I felt free to try new things. And it's, it's, it's for me. A lot of people like it, thank God. 
If they did bad, I'd still be doing this. I'd have a job as well, I'd have this as a pastime, but it doesn't work that way around. You can't sort of say, right, I'm going to start painting what people want and they're bad. It doesn't work. My work divides lots of people. That's fine with me because it's for me. But I just do what I do, put it out there, and it's out there and people can enjoy it or whatever. Thank you.